title of this morning's message is A New Beginning. A New Beginning. Baptism. Let's go. Mark 1, 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance. Fancy word for change. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan. Confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, with you, I am well pleased. Amen. Please pray with me. Help us. Please pray with me. For such a time as this, Lord, you come. For such a time as this, you come right now. Lord Jesus, be with us. Be with us. Give us what we need so we may live the life, the lives you're calling us to live. Take our sin from us. Put new hearts in us. Help us to take your promises. You're the one who said it to tell us thy paid in full. It's all paid for. Help us to receive the forgiveness of sins and new life. To be born from above. To be born again. To live new lives in you. May this happen. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the things that's unique about the book of Mark is 41 times the word immediately is used immediately, like imperatively, like now, it's happening. <clears throat> Let's do it. This kind of popped in my head when I was downstairs this morning at the 8 a.m. service. I looked at our old pews, and I remember when Gwen and I walked in this church in 1992, a very cold night on March. It was cold outside. It was cold inside. There was no, we didn't put any heat on there's hardly any heat. A couple people there were there that night. Uh, Bob Moss was there. Ken Horton was there. Diane McGuff was there. They don't know this. The first thing, I probably shared this before, the DS said to us, uh, looking at those pews this morning, he said to me, you got the most uncomfortable pews in the district. <laughs> and so all I thought was, man, I better preach some good sermons. <laughs> so here goes. A new beginning. New beginning. Not sure I sure I should not sure I should tell this story. That sounds like a you cook a copper cup of coffee in a copper coffee pot, whatever. It's, not sure I should tell this story. Say that five times fast. Said to be true, however. Mother was at home with her two young daughters. Everything seemed to be just fine until the mother realized something strange. The house was absolutely quiet. Now, I, Deb, you're shaking your head. I remember when we had young children, Deb Boffinger, sitting right there for the pew, raised her finger at me and said, I know it's bad when it's noisy, but if it ever gets quiet, check right away. <laughs> That's true. If ever you have kids in the house and it's quiet, check on them. Well, that's what happened. Quietly walking into each of the little girls' rooms, not finding there, the mother finding there, the mother began to get worried. Then she heard it, the sound of whispering, followed by the flushing of the toilet. Whisper, flush, whisper, flush, whisper, flush. So she went to the main bathroom and she saw her two daughters. They had a Barbie upside down. Okay, and they were whispering. 
whispering, and she wanted to hear the whisper, the whisper flush. This is what she heard. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and in the whole you go. <laughs> this morning, the scripture is about baptism. Jesus being baptized, and our being baptized, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther, the father of the Reformation, he only was a father because he was the son of God. Father of the Reformation, he'd have a bad day, he'd get some water, he'd put it on his head and say, I am baptized. That that changed everything. That that's a deal maker. That that's a deal maker that God has given us. That we're baptized. Three things I want to say about the Lord's baptism and baptism today. Three things. The first thing is... Jesus enjoins something to us today. He enjoins. What that means is it's commended to us. It's something we should have. That he had. First thing that Jesus Christ had was humility. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus did not need the forgiveness of sins. But he got in a line of sinners. And he went to be baptized. By John the Baptist. And all John the Baptist could offer him was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But Jesus showed up for that anyway. You know why? Because he had to take it all on. One of the, fa one of the church fathers said, what has not been assumed cannot be redeemed. In other words, that God had to accept it all. And uh, Matt Rioli on Christmas Eve when he talked about the mighty God just coming down. The mighty God becoming a lowly baby. Becoming one of us. Coolest thing on the face of this earth. And it starts with humility. It starts with humility. This is a sinner's ritual that Jesus participates in. Now, I googled humility, and it's enjoined to us, meaning we're, we're, we're called to be humble. And there's power in being humble, because when we're humble before the Lord, when we don't have all the answers, when we're teachable, that means God can do a heck of a lot with us. Be humble, or you'll stumble, D.L. Moody. I love this one. I never heard this before in my life. If you see a turtle on a post, you know he had some help. <laughs> if you see a turtle on a post, you know he had some help. We're all turtles on posts. We've had help. Maybe like Ethan, we had faithful family members. They started our life by bringing us to the very right place. To the fount of baptism. To the fount. The fount of new life. And forgiveness. A great man is always willing to be little. Ralph Waldo Emerson. I have been driven many times upon my knees. By the overwhelming conviction I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom seemed insufficient for the day. Abraham Lincoln. They would testify, they would often find him just kneeling, at, leaning against the chair, saying, I, I can't do this, Lord. I need your help. I can't do this. I need your help. Another one, last one. There's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Ernest Hemingway. In Christianity and Christendom, we call that being born anew. We call that being born from above. We see the humility of Jesus. He wants us to be like that. <coughs> and you know the first part of a great story 
is being teachable and being humble. Second thing, we see the love of God, the plan. Where do you think Jesus gets his clear sense of direction from? The heavens open, and God the Father spoke clearly to God the Son. And the heavens just don't open for Jesus. Jesus opens the heavens for us. A fundamental change, a fundamental change happens in baptism. Forgiveness, new life, the presence of God's Spirit. Jessica, my mother, when I was one of my earliest memories, a uh, little bit later in the morning, and uh, my mom would look at me and say, after some acting out on my part, which children are sometimes want to do, she would say, can we start over? And it was only like maybe 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> still remember her doing that. And Jesus Christ gives us the opportunity to do that in many stages, not just at 9 o'clock in the morning. Help us. A fundamental change happens in baptism. Forgiveness, new life, the presence of God's Spirit, uh, being in union with Jesus, being a part of the body of Christ. God enjoying, in jet, offers us humility. There's a new way through an old problem. God offers us a plan. God has a plan for our lives. Third thing, most important thing, we see the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus receives the Holy Spirit from God, and then Jesus promises us that same Holy Spirit. I will not leave you comfortless. You know, they talk about a sixth dimension. I don't believe in that. I believe in a seventh dimension. It's from God. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's a peace that passes understanding. It's God making a way where there seems to be no way. It's us declaring bankruptcy before the Lord. And He's saying, well, now you're ready for a real plan. God making a way. Yesterday's devotion, our daily bread, because God is powerful, change is possible. Because God is powerful, change is possible. Where do you find power to hang in there? Where do you find the power to hang in there when the going gets really tough? Where do you find the power to continue to believe and love in a world that is filled with hate? Where do you find the power to continue to work for peace in a world that is addicted to violence? You know, I'm talking about the world. Sometimes this stuff gets in the church. Where do you find the power to do the right thing? Where do you find the power to get the reset button? Where do you find the power for thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Where do you find the power to be a disciple of Jesus in this world and in his church. God has opened the heavens for his son and for us. Yesterday in the close, we, uh, in the close of Jack McGuss' memorial service, we prayed for a presence beyond absence. We prayed for a healing beyond pain. We prayed for a wholeness beyond brokenness. We pray for a peace beyond anger. You know, sometimes anger can be the coolest thing in the world. You know, because it gets our attention. But you read in the scripture, man's anger does not fulfill the righteousness of God. So it's got to be surrender. But it's great. It gets our, it's good stuff. It gets our attention. There's a lot of energy in it that can move us forward. Forgiveness beyond the hurting. The Word of God bringing understanding and love. God is making a way. And He's showing the way. But unless there's humility, you won't see it. Unless there's humility, you won't see it. 
And God gives the power to make it happen. God gives the power to make it happen. But like my preaching professor, Ezekiel Bay, Ezekiel Bay, who's serving the church in Atlantic City to this day, and he was teaching me in seminary back in the 80s. He said this, before God gives you his blessing, he dangles your feet over the fire. Do you hear an amen? Amen. amen. <clears throat> Help us, Lord. When we were building the new addition, um, last capital campaign we had, which is kind of crazy. Churches usually have capital campaigns every year. But our last capital campaign, and uh, you know, we were dealing with some conference muckety mucks, and I put my foot down and then said, We're going to pick, I'm going to pick the speaker. Because I didn't want to fill this place and have a bad speaker. I wanted to fill this place and have a good speaker. And uh, they acquiesced, and we had the Reverend John Grove from Columbus Baptist Church. God has done amazing things up there. And uh, I remember John's final point. He said this, God is doing marvelous things. And he said, I have a word from the Lord for you. More is coming. More is coming. And I feel that. And I hear that. It starts with humility. There's power in humility. God, you've got to show me the way. And he does. It's called baptism. It's called a new beginning. It's called being open to God. And then God says to you, I'm going to give you the power to make it happen. Let's pray together. So, in, a, in your heart,